game against Florida. Mark sends ball in the air, and the tap is won by Kelsey Bone. Texas A&M has two SEC losses. Both have come to Kentucky. All six of their losses this year have come to top nine teams. First shot of the game is good. And already, Courtney Walker picking up where she left off the first time these two teams met. And Coach Blair really loves her game, a player that has that mid-range mid game. He talked a lot when we talked to him about players. That's a lost art for him. A lot of players are either three-balling on post, and he has two girls that can shoot it from the mid-range. Heather Bovey, the freshman out of Eau Claire, Wisconsin, has been thrust into a feature role with all the injuries in the front court to Vanderbilt before the season and during. She ties the game at two. Vanderbilt's coming off a top 100 RPI win. They knocked off Florida on the road the other day. Here's Walker. And the rebound to Bovey. Jasmine Lister runs the point more often than not. Leads the SEC in minutes played on the floor at all times just about. Clark the pitch out. Off target was Brown and the rebound to Walker. And that's the shot the Commodores won. You saw them shoot around earlier today. They were working on that pin down and that shot at the free throw line. Bowen trying to bully her way inside. Good defense from Clark. Bowen wanted a foul. Well, anytime your pony feels messed up, that's usually indicative <laughs> of a foul. But <laughs> that was Swin's gauge in uh, inner Connecticut. Definitely was days. my gauge. <laughs> my headband was on the ground, and my ponytail was messed up. It was you're right. You're asking for a foul. Clark. Bobby tried to tip in, and it's grabbed by Walker, who's been active in the first minute of this game. They go right down to Kelsey Bowen. She got doubled about every single time she touched the ball the first time these two teams met. Ended up with four assists, and that's why Walker had such a good offensive game. Pratcher over Bovey. Good defense there, and Vanderbilt has it. And that's a fourth shot there, Brad Pratcher. They, when you have a player like Kelsey Bowen that is one of the best in the country in the low block, just be patient. Give her a couple touches. She's gotten so much better at passing the ball out with, on double teams, reposting, and asking for it again. Two for seven combined start in the first two minutes. A lot of shots going up, and you talked about pace. This is more of AM's pace. They're one of the best and most efficient offenses in the SEC. Vanderbilt trying to be poised and get the shot that they want. They just have to continue to play their game, setting solid screens and getting players open that can shoot the basketball. Shot clock at five, and Lister stepped down the baseline. Last time these two teams met, back in January in College Station, Walker had 14 of her career high 20 in the second half. Remember, Fogey led the way for Vanderbilt with 17 points. She's not available for the fourth consecutive game. She got hurt against Kentucky, and they may not have her for the next couple of games. It's going to be a gauge for Melanie Balkum to decide when Fogey is going to be back in the lineup and for Fogey to decide when she's healthy. Yeah, and a lot of injuries Vanderbilt has right now, but you love to see players like Lister that can take control out there on the floor and if it's scoring or if it's just settling down the team she's been able to do that the last few games for the Commodores Clark against Bone well, Bone really tried to divert her towards the baseline and still made a tough finish Vanderbilt's got its first lead and that's the way that you attack a preseason <laughs> player <laughs> that everyone's been talking about and has got consecutively better over the over the course of this season Courtney Williams the freshman just missed it a rebound to Bovey Saw Lister a week ago against Tennessee. She went off in that game, and the last three, since Fogey's been out, she has really picked up the offense. On fire from outside, and averaging 19 a game as you saw at the top. Gabby Smith has been in that starting spot the last few games. And I would have liked to see Gabby Smith take that shot and shoot around. She was knocking it down. But when you can get a better one like that and you find your top gun lister open, no, no need to rush it. That was a great shot, great execution there by Vanderbilt. A little Seven, screen down. That's right. 7-0 run for Vandy and Lister 14 of her last 26 from outside. Walker off the screen. Couldn't hit the mid-range shot. And Bellick couldn't squeeze it. And talking to, to the assistant coach earlier, she said, we're going to need Tiffany Clark to attack and be effective on the inside. And that is a strong move right there. Attacking the big post player in Kelsey Bone. The way that you keep players working, you make them work on both ends of the floor. They're going to come at you offensively. Defensively, you make them defend. Clark posting up on Bone. Nice show that time by Courtney Williams. And she forces a turnover. Walker kept it alive. Pratcher leads the nation in assist to turnover ratio, but she has been scoring a lot more as of late, too. 
Here's Bone. Let's see how they defend. Smith came over for the double team. Bone's patience got her one on one, and she'll go to the free throw line with a foul on Tiffany Clark. Vanderbilt just scored the last seven points after AM got the first two. Four and a half minutes in here in Nashville. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball. Because, as you see, the benches are under the baskets. This is pretty common knowledge for basketball fans around the country, but he shared with us. You see that big clipboard he just handed to one of the managers? That's his offensive play sheet. He has actually simplified his playbook over the last couple of weeks trying to simplify the offense, but it's still very difficult to coach because his offense is shooting at the opposite end of where Gary Blair is standing right now. In the first half, it's tough to call plays for both coaches for their teams. Very, very tough to call plays, and this is a unique situation, the way this floor is designed. So if you see Coach Gary Blair over there with hand signals, maybe like he's in baseball, it's because he's probably <laughs> going to be calling in plays. And for a coach like him, when you have that connection with your point guards and you're trying, your freshmen that are on the floor, having that extension of you on the floor as far as calling a play and getting in the sets, it, it, it's, it's one of those things that can be detrimental for your team. And so he's going to look to players like Kelsey Bone and other players that are on the floor that are seniors and, and more of the veteran players that can help him out with that. So the signals from Gary Blair a moment ago. Bone inside, couldn't get the roll. It was tipped out, though, to Courtney Williams and another 30-second shot clock. So this is Gary Blair signaling down from his end of the floor to the opposite end. In the second half, obviously, it's a little bit easier to direct when... The teams are going towards their own head coaches. Boy, Bone having a tough start to this ball game, and here comes Lister pushing for Vanderbilt. She missed a few shots, but I like her aggressiveness inside. Bovey. Pushed it back outside to Morgan Beatty, who's been scoring a little bit more as of late. And you see Gary Blair still signaling. He told us that he actually has to signal the offense for the next play down the floor when his team's on defense. Jenkins got her own miss. It stays at this end of the floor with Vanderbilt, 29 on a fresh shot clock. And that's kind of tough whenever you're trying to signal offense while you're on defense because <laughs> the game is moving so fast, right. fast, and you're worried about defensively what you're going to do and still think about offense on the other end. So <laughs> this is going to be a funny first half, I would say. Lister lost it, but he has it. There's a lot of nuances to this building for coaches players for us here we've got the very unique eye level view but at court level where we sit like Gary Blair said it's the ultimate home court advantage in the SEC Bovey really working hard down low solid defensive possession for AM. let's see if they can execute what Gary Blair told him a moment ago bone high post the kick to Williams strong drive Courtney Williams Nice strong move there by Williams. Just taking her time. Whenever you can do a small pump fake at your defender in the air, that is a perfect opportunity to attack the basket. It's a smart move. First field goal in about six minutes for Texas A&M. And Pratcher with a steal. Numbers for AM. This is what you talked about. Bone really likes to run the floor, and now she's got 1,300 she's career done points. An amazing job, Adam. They said this last summer of really working on her physique, working on her body, getting stronger, getting quicker, getting faster, and it's shown up in her game this year. The season's gone along. She has really shown her conditioning and endurance. And right there in transition, hard to stop her. There's Bovey. Strong defense from Bellick. Bone those long arms up there for the rebound. Leading rebounder in the SEC starts the break and Walker we finishes. Time out here. Yep. Timeout. AM answers the Vandy 7 0 run with a 6 0 run of their own, seven minutes in. And Kelsey Bone, you said it. She can run the floor in transition at, at her size very well. And here, whenever you see your point guard has it, you want to get out in transition because she's going to find you. Kelsey Bone able to have poise and finish at the rim. That's something that has shifted for Bone since early in the season. Gary Blair told us that loss to Connecticut early in the season kind of got her thinking about running in transition a little bit more. Picks up another rebound here. Cratcher. Kind of flipped it back out. Uh, awkward possession for Texas A&M. And Cratcher with 18 on the shot clock will slow it down. And there goes the hand signals from Gary Blair from the other end. Cratcher right. taking her time to look back, set the play up. Kendall Shaw is in the post. Bone works against her. Just off front rim. Oh, 
Jenkins has run a lot of the backup point guard spot, allowing Lister to play off the ball as of late, with Fogey out the last few games. Good defense that time from Courtney Walker. Gets the feed from Pratcher. High from the floor. Third leading scorer in the SEC, leading rebounder, is second in the country in field goal percentage. Incredible improvements for the former South Carolina Gamecock. She is one of the dominant players in the country. You go back a couple of years when AM won their national title, Daniel Adams is a player that obviously had a great NCAA tournament run, and feels like Kelsey Bone fits that same mold, a player that can be dominant inside. And it's really crazy because Danielle, her game was really slow paced, but she was effective. Yeah. Uh, and if you look at Kelsey Bone, she has that same type of poise, but she just has to understand about finishing the play at the end. She's capable of doing it. I had an opportunity to even watch her when she was in high school, and I thought her footwork and her just IQ for the game was amazing. She has the potential to be a really, really amazing player. Inbound comes into Brown. Williams defended, and here comes A&M. Both teams have had a run. Both teams have had a drought early. But here's Bo. They put her in a good spot one-on-one, -on -one, and she's going to the line with a foul from Shaw. And that's how you use your strength and your power. You get the ball on a low block. Nice job of A&M doing the high-low. You see the high-low pass here? Set yourself, squat down low, use your strength, and power through. Either you're going to get a bucket or two free throws. That's the way that it has to be. And for this team to advance and do the things they want to do this postseason, they're going to need Bo to do this day in and day out. Bone 0 of 3 early at the free throw stripe, 66% on the season. That's something that she told us on Friday when we got a chance to talk to her. We mentioned the more simplified playbook for Gary Blair's team. Really, they're going back to the high-low game, and we've seen that pretty much the entire nine-minute stretch early. Yes, and going back to the high-low high game is really good for Texas a and because they have the players to fit into that system. So Vandy had a 7-0 run to take a 7-2 lead. Now a 7-0 run from AM. Brown finds Clark, works against Bow. Just couldn't finish at the rim, and a jump ball. Possession arrow will have it with Vanderbilt. Big Monday presented by Bud Light, featuring the top team of the country, Brittany Griner and the Bears, riding a 24-game win streak. They got to go on the road to take on the Sooners in Norman. Monday night, 7 Eastern on ESPN2. Also live on Watch ESPN. Big win last week on Big Monday for Baylor. They took on Connecticut. That big road win. That was a big road win for them. If you look at some of the teams they've been playing in the Big 12 at this point in the season to really go and play against uh, Connecticut and have the one that they had was really great for Baylor. Bone has a breather. Brown has a deep two for Vanderbilt. Bone on the bench. And Carla Gilbert took her spot for the time being, getting a breather. Elon Brown, 39% for the floor. And Melanie Balkum says she's our blue player. Definitely said she's a blue player. And when I spoke to Coach Vicki Pike, as she said, if we can have Brown doing a little bit of everything, it puts us in a really good position down the stretch with Texas A&M. Peyton Little. That was deflected to Williams, who finishes, and she's got four. Halfway through the first, Texas A&M has won 13 of its last 15 games. There are only two losses in that stretch with both come to Kentucky. Still have an outside shot. I'm going to need some help, but an outside shot at the regular season title in the SEC. Beatty to Brown. That's a three. And if Coach Pica was looking for Brown to get hot and play well today, she's starting off pretty good right now. Five quick points and a spurt for Brown. Andy back out in front by one. Looking for Gilbert against Shaw. They continue to double the post, even with Bone off the floor. Brown came over for the double, well defended by Shaw, and a tie-up will keep it at this end of the floor with Texas A&M. Brown appreciates the effort defensively.